right, thank you everybody. So welcome to Town Hall. My name is Adam Chapdelaine. I'm the town manager here in Arlington. Uh, we're here for our second community forum to talk about the bus rapid transit pilot that the town has been awarded a grant from the Barr Foundation to conduct. So some of you may have been here for the first, uh, first community forum we had uh, a number of months ago. And at that forum, we got a lot of good feedback. And I hope the attendees at that forum learned a lot about what bus rapid transit is, what the interventions are, or what the types of things we can do on a roadway to implement bus rapid transit are, and what the benefits are. Since then, uh, the engineering team from VHB has been working with the town to develop options that we can consider along Mass Ave. And frankly, we're excited to be here tonight to talk to you about those options, to present them to you, get feedback at the three stations that we've set up, and then have a clearer path of where we're going to go in the future uh, with, with the pilot. More generally, I want to say we're, we're just excited because we really think we can have a meaningful impact on the lives of really a tremendous number of Arlington residents by implementing bus rapid transit. So 10,000 Arlington residents a day get on either the 77, the 79, or the 350. Arlington only has 45,000 residents, and if you discount for the residents that are ages zero to five, you can do some math and, and understand that it's a huge percentage of people depend on the buses, the 77, the 79, and the 350, to either get to work, get to school, or get to wherever it is that they need to get on a daily basis. So we're really excited that implementing something like we're gonna talk about tonight, or some of the interventions that we're talking about tonight, can have a pretty significant impact on really a huge cross-section of the town of Arlington and their quality of life. So with that, um, thank you for being here. Again, we're excited to present what we have, and now I'm gonna turn it over to Jenny Raitt, the Director of Planning and Community Development, to give a more detailed description of what we're gonna talk about tonight. So thank you. So thank you, Adam, and welcome to everybody. Congratulations for being here on August 15th, the hottest evening so far this week. I'm really glad to see everybody here. There's, there's some food and drinks over here if you want to get some refreshments. Hopefully you've signed in. If you haven't, please do so uh, before you leave. I'm going to talk with you about what we're doing tonight. Um, there is an agenda that's standing up over there by the sign-in uh, table. But um, essentially, I'm going to walk through uh, why are we here tonight, um, other than what Adam has introduced to you, just give you a little bit more perspective about the reason that the town has decided to pursue this pilot and what we think will be the best impact that we can see out of the pilot project, and then also give you some sense of where things will go after the pilot is through. Um, so the timeline and then the process thereafter. Um, then I'm gonna turn it over actually to Albert Ng from VHB. He's uh, one of the engineers on the team from VHB who's been working on uh, exploring the different scenarios that we're gonna talk with you about tonight. Um, so he'll walk through that in a big picture, and then we're going to spend the bulk of the evening, actually, um, going around the room. You're going to get three stops along the way. I want to call them bus stops, so I'm going to do that now. Um, <laughs> Got to throw some, something corny in there. Come on, let me, let me do it. <laughs> um, you're going to go around the room. You have, does everybody have a little piece of paper that's like green or blue or yellow? That's going to correspond with a station around the room. You're gonna get some time at each station to see a segment of the corridor, and then you're gonna go again. And at the end, we're gonna wrap up, summarize what we heard, and again, I'll, I'll talk about those next steps. So uh, the purpose, why are we here? I, I feel like since we started this process, which was about a year ago, or a year or so ago, um, people have wondered why on earth would Arlington entertain uh, bus rapid transit pilot project, what would, what would, be, what would make you want to do that? Um, and also, of course, there's a lot of people who don't know about bus rapid transit because it's not that familiar to a lot of people in the greater Boston region. Um, it's not something that's been tested in a lot of locations. It's really something that's a lot more globally oriented. There are major cities doing it, but why would a suburb do it? Why would we look at this? So, we have, there's a number of reasons why, and one of them is the reason that Adam noted earlier, which is that we have a great opportunity here with bus transit being here in Arlington, multiple routes that are available, three of which, as you know, go right down the Mass Ave corridor and bring people to different parts of the region, Cambridge, beyond, et cetera. 
So there's a lot of opportunity to get our residents where they need to go. It helps connect them to jobs. It helps connect them to economic opportunity. It helps connect them to housing. And it helps bring them home back to Arlington, where they often do lots of other things, too. So it's really a, it's a great connector, and it's something that we want to enhance. The reason we want to enhance it is because many of you might know we had an opportunity a long time ago to think about actual train service, like the extension of the red line going through Ar uh, Arlington all the way possibly to Lexington and beyond. That didn't happen. That didn't happen because we have a wonderful other resource and asset, which is the Minuteman Bikeway. So we have buses, and we want to do the best we can with those buses and make it even better. So enhanced bus service, we think, is an untapped opportunity and is something that is currently tapped by nearly a quarter of our residents just these three lines. So that's really significant. Here's a challenge, though. So many people are using the buses, but they can't get to where they need to go that quickly. There's a lot of congestion on the roadway. There's some reliability issues. And we thought that this pilot is an opportunity to explore ways to address those issues. Um, granted, it's only these three bus routes. And granted, it's only Arlington. But there's some real opportunity there. So you've heard a little, bit, a little bit about the bus ridership. This is the breakdown version. 7,600 plus riders a day are on the Route 77 bus. These are people that are from Arlington. 1,200 plus riders a day uh, ride the Route 79 bus. And on 350, 1,600 plus riders. That's how we come to that over 10,000 number. So it's pretty significant. And it's, it's also significant because there's a lot of, there's a more breakdown in that population. For those of you who attended that first forum back in May, we shared a lot of these slides uh, previously. Ralph Donesco, who's from Stantec, who's also in the back raising his hand and waving at us. Um, you're all looking at me. Um, he's, uh, he's the one who actually prepared these numbers and prepared this information, which showcases for us an understanding about who's on the bus and why it matters. And when you know that there's not just a significant population of Arlington residents, but also vulnerable populations, uh, lower income populations, lots of students, other people, we want to get them to where they're going. And I mentioned the part about congestion. There is a variance in terms of time travel, not the, you know, you want to get to where you're going and you want to get there faster and you want to be on the bus, but there are places along the Mass Ave corridor that have some serious bottlenecks. One of them is in between Lake Street and the Elway Brook Parkway. In some spots, you end up waiting there on that bus for 10 to 20 minutes. And we want to look, we looked at through this process, ways to rejigger that, ways to prevent that from happening. So that, developed, that helped us to develop the pilot goals. Um, there are some super goals that I'll tell you about, like as in the big picture goals, why are we doing this? One is, I think if you saw the news this week, you may have seen something about you know, Arlington talking about our role as a green community, our role in wanting to reduce carbon emissions, become net zero by a certain year in the far future. Um, that, is, that is part of our big super goal. We believe in this as a way to reduce carbon emissions and reduce and look at that as a, a green community impact. That's great in the, in the bigger future. The other bigger future would be changing the modes and getting people out of their cars. We realize that's a very big picture thing. For this pilot, we have some very specific goals. First one is we want to get the traffic going, so the flow. We want to get people moving, not be blocked up and in a bus or in multiple buses behind another bus. We want to get that clog taken care of. And we want to reduce the travel time for people who are on the bus so that they can get to where they're going which means we then need an increase in reliability. You're waiting there for the bus, and you get on it, and you go. So it has some impacts. We realize that. And we've been looking at what can happen when you introduce these concepts, especially on an, a corridor that has a lot going on. There's a lot of modes. There's people walking. There's people biking. We've tried to take that all into account. And once you get around the room, you'll see how that's accounted for in each scenario. Um, we have have to make some design decisions along the way. And so with your input tonight, that'll help us to refine those design decisions. But there are trade-offs to be made in order to introduce what we're talking about this evening, whether we're talking about parking, whether we're talking about how cars use the roadway. The only way to do this the right way, though, 
is to think about the space that can be allocated for the bus. And so we've tried to take that into consideration as best we can in each one of the options that we've explored. And some of them we didn't, and you'll see that. So the timeline, we've got, we started this actually back, oopsies, we started this back in April. So from April to June roughly, we were doing some field work, which included uh, some scouting work by the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, which served the purpose for us understanding a little bit more about parking utilization, as in how many spaces are occupied along the Mass Ave corridor on the westbound side as well as the eastbound side. Uh, that helped to inform our knowledge and understanding about when people are there, when parking is occupied. Uh, we also did a lot of field analysis with VHB, that he's gonna talk about that shortly. Um, so April to June, back in May, as you know, we had a forum. How many folks were at that forum, actually? Okay, so not, not everybody. If you weren't at the forum and you're really curious about like Ralph's presentation and the other presentations that happened that night, they're all uploaded on the Town of Arlington website. Um, I don't have the exact link to the page, but the Bus Rapid Transit pilot has, I think, a link to, on the, from the project page of the town's website, and that's where you can find that presentation if you're curious about it. Um, so then after that educational forum, and that's what it was meant to be, we then went right into the study of the scenarios in the pilot and uh, have also been engaging with the East Arlington business community and other stakeholders in East Arlington, again, to introduce to them a little bit more about what we're exploring and also vetting different ways to do this pilot. So obviously tonight we're having the forum. After this forum, we're gonna take suggestions and other ideas that we hear tonight and keep on further refining the pilot so that we ultimately get to a preferred pilot. So part of tonight is about preference. What are people's preferences? You'll have an opportunity to vote at the stations. Um, we'll eventually have a preferred pilot that we will then begin to move forward and the actual implementation of that pilot will occur in October, is our timeline. We'll be evaluating it, actually, there will be a pre-project survey of both the business community, the riders of the bus, uh, for both perspectives um, on whether or not how they feel about riding the bus, any changes to that perception of riding the bus, as well as understanding any impacts on the business community and beyond, property owners in general. Um, we will also be discussing this at a future select board meeting. And at the end of the pilot, we will then bring it back all together for another final forum in November, where we'll wrap it up and talk about the next steps, talk about the future, whether or not we wanna pursue this in the long run. It is meant to be a one month pilot though. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Albert, who is gonna talk about the pilot options. Thanks so much. Great, thanks Jenny. I'd like to thank the Bar Foundation who supports, uh, who supported this financially, uh, our work financially, and, and certainly the town of Arlington who um, brought us in to, to work on this very exciting opportunity to improve bus service uh, through this corridor. So the pilot, how we're gonna execute the pilot is kind of outlined in this slide. Um, we, there's going to be very little uh, to no construction. So a lot of the kind of interventions that we're going to talk about and you'll see uh, at each of the stations is going to be um, using cones, using enforcement, using uh, the DPW is going to be out there uh, kind of in implementing this in the morning. Uh, and then in addition, Arlington PD is going to help support this um, through enforcement as well. Um, it is going to happen uh, within or around the, the month of October, and it's just for a single month. It only affect the morning commute, um, and it will only be in the eastbound direction. So we, we, we do want to remind people that it's, it's on a temporary basis uh, day to day, and it's only going to be uh, during the weekdays as well. Uh, the pilot location is, is really in the East Arlington community. Again, as, as Jenny mentioned, it's, it's going to be from Lake Street all the way to Alewife Book Parkway. Um, there's a lot of opportunity, opportunity within that corridor to improve bus service, to improve travel times and reliability for the buses. Um, what we'll see, and, and I'm not going to go through th these in detail, but there are three different sections um, that we are going to be looking at. Um, one is the Lake Street intersection. The next one is kind of the area between Lake Street and Illinois Book Parkway. And then finally, the Illinois Book Parkway intersection. So when we, when we, uh, our, our job, our, our task was to really look 
actually at the entire corridor of Mass Ave. So that includes all the way from the Heights uh, to Alewife Book Parkway. Uh, uh, but you know, we're focusing the pilot in East Arlington. But we did look at all of the opportunities from, uh, from the uh, town of Lexington all the way uh, to Alewife Book Parkway. As far as data collection goes, we, we did do um, automatic, automatic, automated traffic recording uh, of volumes within the, uh, the entire corridor. Uh, that includes uh, vehicles uh, by classification, and, and it also includes bicycles as well. As, uh, we also did uh, morning observations to understand, uh, again, to kind of supplement that parking study that Jenny had mentioned, uh, looking at what the occupancy is, looking at how the you know, parking lanes were used, how busy the intersections were, and that, and that sort of thing. And we also took a look in and did some measurements in the field as well. From there, from all those different inputs, uh, we developed our conceptual designs, um, looking at different alternatives. And it really was a range. And, and, and we tried to kind of piece together some of these interventions so that they made sense together. Um, and it, it, it dealt with both continuous treatment, so whether or not we can link up some of these things, and also taking a little bit more of a surgical approach. Is there a, a specific intervention at this location that would really improve bus service through the area? Um, and, as, and again, as Jenny mentioned, we did have um, a, a pretty um, strong uh, review process, and we did work with a uh, we did work with a, a working group um, that was made up of bicycle and pedestrian advocates, as well as uh, small business owners in East Arlington. And then after this, we're doing the uh, you know we'll move on to the pilot and then do a post pilot evaluation. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, there's the Mass uh, Ave at Lake Street intersection where there really is a strong opportunity to improve bus service. If anybody has been there, you, you, you know that the bus stop is located in the right turn lane, which uh, contributes to some of the delay that, that happens. But we can go into that um, more specifically when we go into our different uh, stations. Uh, in addition to that, um, we looked at hourly parking data that was provided by the MAPC and some additional data that we, we took a look at. Then we also looked at uh, the Mass Ave between Lake and Alewife Book Parkway. Uh, in this case, we have three alternatives that we're going to run through with you uh, at our, each of our stations. Again, looking at similar data um, throughout the corridor. And then finally, Alewife Book Parkway. Uh, if anybody sat in that queue at Alewife Book Parkway and the eastbound approach, everybody knows that the queue can be pretty substantial, sometimes backing up all the way to Thorndike, which is the next uh, signalized intersection down. So there really is a strong opportunity to move the bus through that area, and we'll talk about that again at the station. Uh, the, some of the evaluation criteria that we're looking at, you can see them up here. It's really bus travel time, bus reliability. Um, if we're impacting uh, pedestrian or bicycle movement or activity in the area, um, whether or not there's uh, some parking impact um, at each of these different sections, and also the feasibility. You know, can we get this done? Is it, are people going to understand the interventions that we are putting forward? Is it gonna be difficult for DPW to execute, um, take up the cones on a daily basis, that sort of thing? Next we'll go into, uh, Jenny will talk about the, the kind of the format of the, the rest of the day. Thanks. Thank you, Albert. Um, and just a quick thank you to all the other folks who helped with this uh, design. A couple of other folks from your team are here, so just want to recognize them. Um, so we've got three small groups. Everybody has a piece of paper that's green, yellow, or blue? Hopefully. Yes. Yay. Guess what? We're going to them. <laughs> So um, if I can ask if everybody who's staffing a station could go to their station. We have a green group over here. We have a blue group in the back and a yellow group over there. I'm going to tell you really quickly what's happening first, though. So first thing is we've got about 20, 25 minutes in each group. I'm going to give you a little time to get from one group to the next. At each group, here's what's will what will happen. You're going to have an orientation by somebody from VHB who's going to introduce and detail exactly what the options are that you're going to be looking at. Then you'll have an opportunity to ask some questions. Um, and when you do that, if you could please introduce yourself 
um, and help get to your question as soon as possible. We want to make sure that everybody has a chance. Uh, I was at a meeting recently on this particular topic, and there were lots of people with questions. Lots of people have a lot of need help understanding the information. If you don't get your question answered for some reason, let us know. Let a staff person know, and we will follow up with you. But we want to do our best to get as many questions in as possible in about 10, 15 minutes. Then we're going to wrap up by having you vote on your preferred option. Um, there's also some comment cards, I think, that are somewhere floating around here. You can fill that out, too, and give us some follow-up feedback. So with that, the last thing was be nice, actually. That was the last comment there. <laughs> All right, that's the, that's the summary version of the fourth bullet. Um, let's try to be respectful. I know that this can be emotional for folks. Let's try to keep it in a respectful way as possible. Ready? Okay. 